a lot of people we work with struggle with heartburn. Maybe you're one of those people, that painful burning sensation in your chest coming up into your throat. There can be other symptoms of heartburn like chronic cough and throat irritation. It can be a really big deal. It can disrupt your life in many ways. And a lot of people are either taking over the counter medication for heartburn or prescription medications for heartburn, and some of them for years. The problem with this approach is that these medications actually disrupt digestion, and there's a lot of downstream effects from that, including imbalances in your microbiome, poor digestion, and then therefore poor absorption of nutrients, increased risks of infections and bone loss. The list of complications goes on and on. So getting to the root of why you're having heartburn and resolving it naturally is super important. I'm Dr. Lori Anderson from Thrive and Functional Medicine, and I wanna share with you five tips today that I hope will help you resolve your heartburn and maybe even help you get off medication if you're on it. Now, there are cases where it's important to take medication, and that's if you've been diagnosed with an actual ulcer, and you need that medication for up to 30 days to help it heal. In that case, that's a different situation. But if you have just regular old run-of-the-mill heartburn, let's start with tip number one, and that's simply practice mindful eating. Now, what does that mean? That means sit down. That means get present. That means slow down. That means being grateful for your food. That means chewing well. All of those are part of what we call mindful eating. And really what it's doing is helping your body be in what we call a parasympathetic state. That's part of your nervous system that allows you to digest and absorb food. If you're eating on the go all the time, if you're standing up and rushing out the door or going through the drive-thru and driving to your next appointment or your next kid's appointment or whatever, you're actually not even in a state in your body with your nervous system that you can digest food. And that's gonna be much more likely to cause heartburn. So if you can, we really recommend taking at least 20 minutes to eat, sit down, enjoy the time with your family, make sure you're thoroughly chewing, being grateful, breathing, all the things that are gonna help improve absorption and digestion, which in turn can prevent heartburn. Because you see, heartburn is not too much acid. That's what most people think is that, oh, I have heartburn, I have too much acid. No, what actually is going on is that you have acid in the wrong place at the wrong time. We have to have stomach acid in the stomach in order to digest, to break down food and to keep our microbiome balanced. That means kill off the bad bugs. But if we have acid coming up into the esophagus where it's not meant to be, that's what's causing those symptoms. And that happens from rushed eating amongst other things. Okay, so the first tip is mindful eating. Tip number two is, checking my notes so I, so I don't uh, get lost, is water intake. Now, a lot of us drink our water or our fluid intake with our meal. That actually makes heartburn worse because what that's doing is, number one, diluting digestive juices and stomach acid in particular, and it's increasing the volume in our stomach, which is more likely than to cause that stomach contents and acid to come up into the esophagus. So when should you be drinking your fluid, your water intake? You should be drinking that in between meals, at least 30 minutes before or an hour after eating. Now here's a pro tip. If you are feeling hungry in between meals, often it's actually thirst. We can confuse those signals sometimes. And so if you feel hungry, take a big drink of water first before grabbing a snack. So water intake is really important. You've got to hydrate adequately. We've done lots of videos about that before, but get that water intake in between the meals, not at the meals. The other reason that we drink water with our meals is again, because we're in a rush and we haven't chewed adequately. There's not enough saliva. And so the food sticks in our throat. So we have to wash it down with our, with our drinks. That's a clue to you that you need to slow down chew more because if we adequately chew, we have enough saliva that everything's moistened and it goes down well without water. Okay, so that's number two. Drink your water away from meals. Here's number three, snacking. I just, I just touched on that briefly. Often when we're snacking between meals, it's, it's a mindless habit. First of all, we're not really thinking about it, but often it's because we're actually thirsty. So again, if you feel like snacking, grab a big drink of water first, that can help. But then ask yourself, why, why am I wanting to snack here? Am I actually hungry? If you're actually truly hungry, you maybe didn't eat enough at the last meal because you were in such a rush. All you did was grab a protein bar. You need to eat a real meal, okay? Snacking in between meals is a great way to cause heartburn because your body is continuously making stomach acid when every time you snack. Your body should be able to have rest periods where that 
all goes down and everything goes through. So avoiding snacking between meals and also avoid eating after 7 p.m. I like to say after 7 p.m. or at least two hours before bed. Now this has to do with gravity and that's gonna be the next tip, number four, but uh, you don't wanna be eating within two hours of bedtime for a number of reasons, blood sugar regulation for one, but also uh, to allow adequate digestion to happen before you're lying down. So no snacking and don't eat after 7 p.m. These are great ways to help reduce heartburn. And by the way, might help you lose weight too and regulate your blood sugar. So lots of pros there. Uh, number four, this is gravity. So if you stay up right after eating, it helps keep the stomach contents and the stomach acid down in the stomach where they're designed to be and, and, and where they need to be. If you immediately lie down or recline after eating, then you don't have the effect of gravity keeping everything down in the stomach where it needs to be. So I recommend staying upright um, for a minimum. That means sitting fully upright or standing for a minimum of 30 minutes to an hour after eating. What's even better than that is going for an easy walk. I don't recommend going to the gym and doing a CrossFit workout or a HIIT workout, but if you go for a gentle walk, you're also, again, promoting better blood sugar balance, but promoting that digestion to keep its its job going and everything going down in the right direction. Um, so stay upright and moving after meals, it helps. It helps a lot because you're taking advantage of gravity. All right, here's our tip number five. Of course, there's many more tips, guys. And if you have been on something like a proton pump inhibitor for a long time, you may need some additional help to figure out how to taper off that and get off of that. But I urge you to do so because again, long-term use of those medications can really be dangerous and increase your risk of bone fractures, serious infections, nutrient deficiencies, etc. So this is, it's kind of a big deal. Um, tip number five, there is something that you can do before your meals that may aid digestion, improve digestion, and reduce heartburn afterwards, and that's a little apple cider vinegar. We like to recommend mixing a little apple cider vinegar with a little fresh squeezed lemon and a little unsweetened cranberry juice, which is a bitter. And that combination, if you put it in water and you drink just a little bit, maybe a couple, two, three, four ounces, maybe 15 minutes before you eat, it already starts priming your digestive system and your digestive juices. It also helps regulate blood sugar and reduces cravings. So again, there's lots of benefits to this. Now you can adjust the formula if you don't tolerate more or a little less, or maybe you can't do cranberry, but you could do the others. You can experiment, figure this out, but that's a great way to help prevent that heartburn down, down the road. All right, I'm gonna give you a couple bonus tips here. Um, the first tip is we often put people on digestive enzymes who are having heartburn because the problem is not too much acid, it's actually too little in many cases. When you don't have enough stomach acid and you don't digest your food properly, then what is in your stomach is gonna come back up in your esophagus. Adding a proper digestive enzyme helps support digestion and prevents that coming back up afterwards. Now that is actually a whole nother topic because there's so many different types of digestive enzymes, when to take them, which one, which type, what dose. We can help you with that if you need the help, but digestive enzymes can be helpful. We have some very specific ones that we recommend to our clients based on their needs, uh, whether you have a gallbladder or not, whether you uh, you know have a hiatal hernia or not, all kinds of different uh, particulars, but digestive enzymes can be really helpful. And then here's my last bonus tip, and that is there are certain things that really trigger heartburn. And a couple of those can be coffee and soda. Those are really, really big culprits. And so minimizing, reducing, or maybe even eliminating coffee and soda can, in some cases, eradicate heartburn completely. Now, there's other benefits to letting those go too, which we've talked about elsewhere, but that's a whole bunch of tips that I hope will help you get that heartburn under control, help you take steps towards getting off medication and ultimately supporting your long-term health because you are worthy and capable of healing and you're not alone. Take care.